Now we'll look at an example involving the velocity and acceleration functions given the position function. We're given that s of t is the equation of motion for a particle. We want to find the velocity function, v of t. We want to determine where the velocity equals zero and also find the acceleration function, a of t. Well, the velocity function measures the change in the position with respect to time. So the velocity function, v of t, is equal to the derivative of the position function. And since the position function is a polynomial function, we can find the derivative using the power rule of differentiation given here in red. So v of t is going to be equal to six times the derivative of t to the third, which would be three t to the second, minus 45 times the derivative of t to the second, which would be two t to the first, plus 108 times the derivative of t, which is equal to one. Which means our velocity function, v of t, is equal to 18 t to the second minus 90 t plus 108. Next we're going to find when the velocity equals zero. So using our velocity function, we'll set v of t equal to zero and then solve for t. So we'd have zero equals 18 t squared minus 90 t plus 108. Looks like this is going to be factorable. We'll start by factoring out the greatest common factor, which is 18. So we'll have zero equals 18 times the quantity t squared. There's five 18s and 90, so we have minus five t. And there are six 18s and 108, so we have plus six. And we'll factor again. This will factor into two binomial factors. We have t and t. The factors of positive six that add to negative five are negative two and negative three. So this product here is equal to zero when t equals positive two or when t equals positive three, which is when the velocity is equal to zero. And before we talk about the acceleration function, I'd like to take a look at graphically what we just found. Well, here's a graph of our position function. Notice how it's a degree three polynomial. And then we found the velocity function, which was a degree two polynomial, or a quadratic function, as we see here. And if we graph both of these on the same coordinate plane, notice how where the derivative function is equal to zero, here and here, the position function has either a high point or a low point, which represents a relative maximum or relative minimum of the position function. So notice when t is equal to two, we're at this high point here, where the position function has a relative maximum. And when t is equal to three, we're at this low point here, where the position function has a relative minimum. And also because this is where the velocity is equal to zero, we can see this represents the instant when the particle changes direction, creating a high point or a low point in the position function. And now going back to our last question, we're asked to find the acceleration function. Well, the acceleration function measures the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time, which means the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function. So the acceleration function is equal to the derivative of the velocity function. But remember, the velocity function was the derivative of the acceleration function, so we can also say this is equal to the second derivative of the position function. But since we already have the velocity function here in black, let's go ahead and use this function to find our acceleration function. So the acceleration function is going to be equal to 18 times the derivative of t squared, which is 2t, minus 90 times the derivative of t, which is just one, plus the derivative of 108, the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So this is our acceleration function. Let's go ahead and simplify this. A of t is equal to 36t minus 90. Okay, that's gonna do it for this example. I hope you found this helpful.